is my ignition system. This burning cord I'm holding between my fingers. It's called slow match, and that's why it's a match like musket. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to load this thing and shoot it. I'm going to talk about it for a little bit because I get paid to talk and couldn't tell. If you have questions, hang on to them because I will probably answer during the talking part. And if I don't, I'll stick around and answer when I'm all done. And then the best way to end the musket demonstration is to shoot it again. That means you get two bangs for your buck. Tough crowd. <laughs> too late. On the second shot, I'll describe the entire loading and firing procedure, everything I'm doing here. This takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Shoot, reload, shoot again. Makes this an automatic musket. I shoot it, automatically reload it. You had your chance. This is my day job. Give me two commands. Number one, present your piece. I'm going to aim it down the road here. Second command, give fire. If you want to cover your ears, best way to do it, use the flap. Palms up your hands like this, all right? Do not stick your fingers in there. If that doesn't work, it might damage something in there, and it looks really silly, so don't do that. Present your piece. Give fire. He said cow skin. Now it's animal skin, let's hope. Is it always cow? No, no, no. So if you guys been to the Indian town, Indian village over there, well, make sure you go. They won't be wearing cow. What animal would they have? Deer. They had deer. They have lots of deer. Now you know answers. And so now, so yeah, a lot of deer over there, but we're English. We're going to use our English farm animals. Lots of cow, uh, sheep, let's see, cow, sheep, pig, definitely pig, uh, and then ox, and then my favorite is kid skin. That's a really good skin right there. So, yeah, baby goat. Uh, we might be cooking in the uh, building behind you, uh, which that is, I think, barracks. Uh, the big room there, the hall, um, cooking is one of those activities you would definitely see in a situation like that because during the martial law period that we're showing you, one of the mandates uh, for any construction that it had to have a heart, the building, so the men could cook amongst themselves. There's some really cool things and uh, I hope we like the footage I get of the people on the stuff like that, some really interesting information. So, you know, let's check it out, get some good pictures. It's from one hand to the other hand when they're outstretched as far as you can get. Now, is my fathom the same, same length as your fathom? Because I'm a little bit bigger, right? But if we were all adults, all of our, our fathoms would be closer together. Um, and that, that gives them a good estimate about how long these things are. And if you're a sailor, it's really easy to measure how long a rope is. You take it, you pull it out that way, you know, that's one fathom. You grab it, pull it out again, you know, that's another fathom. And about two thirds of the English die that week. Those that survive, when they give up, they get low, they start sailing back home because spring the pots are happy as you can tell, but they're not gone for long. The next day they're caught in the Chesapeake Bay by the supply ship and the governor tells you to turn around and take the home. So you have this whole war that breaks out, basically based on the whole premise of the Anglo Pouton trade, the inequities of that relationship. So we just left the Jamestown thing. 
right in time too because it started pouring while we were on the inside exhibits. So basically the biggest difference between this and the Mayflower is uh, the Mayflower was religious freedom and they got along with the Indians. Here they kind of got along with the Indians but then they started a war with them and forced them to trade. So yeah, the, uh, it didn't turn out real good for the Indians which is unfortunate. They should have cooperated better I think like the Pilgrims did. But in any case, make your own conclusions. So, cool place though. Check it out. And for the first time, we are on a ferry to take us over the river. How cool is that? Yeah, he thinks it's cool. Fossil hunting here at Chicka Peaks uh, Park, State Park. There's definitely fossils. We're looking for shark teeth. That's what we've heard they're at. So, see if we find anything. So, here's our haul. You check it out. And we've got some really cool things. I don't know if this is a shark tooth or not. I don't know. Looks pretty cool though. So, it was totally worth coming out here though. Because, I mean, we don't. You don't see these around us. Check it out.